Hello guys and welcome to yet another video and let us try to keep our STEM train moving. Okay, so we're continuing with our physical science paper one from November 2020 for the IEB. Okay, exam. Again, I must express my gratitude for spreading the word and for sharing the videos with your peers. And I can see the channel is growing ever slowly but ever surely and it's it's motivating so let's keep working together guys and i also appreciate all your comments that you've been putting forward and some corrections where i made some you know errors so it is very 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 humbling that you guys are willing to work with me a stranger to you but yeah i think your work is appreciated so keep doing what you do i will also keep my end of the deal all right now let's do question four which is newton's laws of motion <clears throat> now it says a 50 kg metal box is pulled across a rough now in physics some words have some implications mathematical implications at least or some physical quantity is to be thought of <clears throat> Now, saying across a rough horizontal surface with a force of 300 newtons acting at an angle of 20 degrees to the surface, the frictional force acting on the box is 180 newtons. Okay, it's already drawn for us, so we don't have to worry about it. The other thing is, if you think of friction for a moving object, it is essentially kinetic friction. Okay, just keep that in mind. So the first question says, draw a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the metal box. Not a problem. So we're going to start here and handle our work nice and easy. Question four. So we're doing 4.1. Point one. I'm not going to write 4.1, it really doesn't matter. So we're doing a free body diagram. So in a free body diagram, of course, you have to think about the force mentioned. So this is Fk, okay, kinetic friction. And then we're going to have a, f oh, no, 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 no. We're going to have this force here. We're just going to write F, which we can write to identify it's 300 newtons. And then, of course, it was acting at 20 degrees. We can show it. Now, I'm in doing that. And then, of course, its weight is going to be directly down. Of course, my, my position here is killing me. Then we're going to have the normal force. Okay. So, of course, write this in full, say, kinetic friction, force applied, gravity, or you can say the weight, and the normal force. It's really up to you. Or you can write in symbolic form like that. Um, and you can just write your little toolbox there, and then you explain what each letter in the diagram means, okay? So that's it, four marks. You can see there's four forces, one, two, three, four. 4.1.2. Question says now, state Newton's law, Newton's second law of motion. I think this definition is already popular, so you should know it. If you don't, then please make sure you consult any materials you have. I will not go into writing it because my writing is already terrible, but let's just summarize it. The essence of Newton's law is, I mean, second law of motion is that the resultant force, so you say F sub rest equals mass times acceleration. That's the essence of it. So you just formulate the words around it. But you have to consider two proportionalities here is that the acceleration is directly proportional to the resultant force. And two, that the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So of course you say if a resultant force is applied on an object, it causes that object to accelerate in the direction of force. 
such that the acceleration is directly proportional to the force, the resultant force actually, and is inversely proportional to the mass of that object. So that is just the essence of Newton's law. So how are we going to formulate your words? But make sure you capture this scenario explained here. So you have your two marks there. Don't lose it. It's not necessary to lose it. One comma, sorry, four comma one comma three. Now, what is the next question? It says, whew, calculate the magnitude, okay, of the acceleration of the metal box. Remember, when they tell you magnitude, it's already telling you don't have to worry about direction. But I always treat my vectors as vectors. I do not treat them as scalar quantities, so I will always include my direction, but you don't really have to win. They said magnitude, okay? They will never penalize you for including direction, but if it was not mentioned though that the magnitude, then you would be penalized for not including the direction. Okay, so now we have to think about our diagram a little bit more, okay? We have to think about it a little bit more. So, 4.1.3 for us to work on this we need to think about it a little bit more so there it is we have our f which is 300 newtons that was applied and then we know that well this force if it is at an angle to the horizontal it will have two components to it isn't it so these components it's sort of like a head to tail type of diagram because this becomes the resultant force you can see it starting from the beginning to the end all right so 20 degrees that is your grade 11 i hope but maybe grade 10 you know things have been switched around a little bit these days so we said this is going to be our fk which we were told is 180 newtons okay not a problem and what do we know? Vertical forces essentially cancel each other out. So we don't have to worry about the weight and the normal force here. But we have to worry about the Fy. Okay, maybe Fy because it's vertical. It's not important, but the horizontal component of that force, which is Fx, is really critical for us to do this acceleration. Now, we know that the vertical forces cancel each other out, so they are out of the question. And what is the story here? This force acts such that these two components are at play. So which one now do we have to consider is the horizontal component? So if you simplify your diagram now, you have a situation where you have Fx acting in that direction and Fk acting in that direction. Okay. Now, that is what we're going to use because our second law of motion now tells us that, okay, if we want the acceleration here, first of all, we need this guy. Now, how do we need, how do we do this guy? If you focus on this triangle here, this guy is on the horizontal side, which is adjacent to the angle. All right, so this is a right angled triangle, so we can use uh, trigonometry here cos right so we know that in this case fx is going to be equal to the force multiplied by cos of 20 degrees of course i'm just doing it fast if you like you can write cos of 20 equals adjacent of hypotenuse which is fx over that and then you cross multiply that you solve fx which is the same thing so i'm just assuming you guys know what to do but if you don't yeah try and revise some of these things then it will make sense k times 300 so i get 281 comma 91 newtons okay of course this is a vector so i always use an arrow or you can say to east or whatever you want to use I mean but make sure you capture that direct I mean that direction or you can say 90 degrees because we always measure our direction or our angles on the Cartesian plane from the north being 0 east being 90 south being 180 and so forth okay why did we do this because we want to use this luxury the 
that we know though that our resultant force according to Newton's second law equals mass times acceleration and what would be the case the object is moving due east and that means our fx is greater than our fk so we can simply say fx minus fk I know these things look a bit alike so don't kill me for it equals ma now we can substitute we can say in fact I like to say this implies uh, I can uh, this one here you don't have to do anything okay then what we can say this also implies now that 2 8 1 comma 9 1 minus 180 equals the mass we were told is 54 uh, 50 kgs so this is 50 times a then now when you make a the subject of the formula you get an answer so it's essentially this difference divided by 50 so let's go for it 281 comma 91 minus 180 divide by 50 so what I get is 2 comma 0 4 to two decimal places meters per second squared okay then of course the object was moving in which direction? In that direction. So it will follow the resultant force. So you can write to east, you can put an arrow. It's still okay. Of course, they just said magnitude, so you won't be punished if you don't get this one right. But it's something I want you to always keep in mind. When you're dealing with a vector quantity, make sure you include its direction. Okay, so I would say here maybe two marks there for that work over there maybe one mark for this one mark for the substitution and then one mark for the answer so this is how you get your five marks of this question okay I hope this is easy all right and then move the page away keep moving here so the next question says calculate the magnitude of the normal force that the ground is exerting on the box hmm. now this question is very nice because it bounces back between a few things here so this is 4 comma 1 comma 4 now let's think about it again what was the scenario here I'm just doing this for your benefit guys you don't have to always do this when you're doing your exams okay so I have here these forces this is Fy this is Fx that's the angle 20 degrees and then I have my friction Fk and then I had my Fg there and then I had my normal force okay so this is the scenario basically then of course 90 degrees between these two head to tail method of doing your force diagram or vector diagram whatever they called it anyway so what do we want now we're focusing on the vertical forces what do we know about them then balance that means fg is balanced by both fy and normal force okay and normal force and fy in the same direction so they will add up together so we can simplify our diagram to this of course this is normal force and then we don't know which one is bigger than the other but there's another one there which is Fy okay so we can see here that there's two forces opposing the weight but these together add up to zero isn't it because the object is neither moving vertically down or vertically up so what do we need we need Fy and now how do we get Fy we know that it is the opposite to that angle so we can use sine theta so that we know that Fy equals the force multiplied by sine of 20 degrees again I'm already summarizing this you can go about it the long route which is okay 
problem so let's just do this quickly so sine of 20 multiplied by 300 I get 102,61 newtons whoops wrong direction but straight up okay <laughs> It's directly up or is at zero degrees if you want or due north. However you want to make that description, but make sure it's correct and it makes sense. But now why did we do all of this? We know for a fact that, wait a minute, we know that, well, F, Y plus the normal force, I'm just going to use capital letter N, equals fg okay well you can say these are in balance or you can say the object is neither moving up or down okay or you can just say there's no vertical motion or you can say in balance or you can even use a very good alternative equilibrium okay so I mean you can be fancy about it you can be simple about it you can just be direct okay it's up to you and this implies that what is FY is 102 whoa 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 102 comma 61 plus our n equals what is FG is going to be 50 times 9 comma 8 isn't it then isolating this guy we know that n is going to be 50 times 9 comma 8 minus that 102 comma 61 let us see what is the story in there okay so 50 times 9 comma 8 minus 102 comma 61 uh, I get three eight seven comma three nine newtons and what was the direction of the normal force is upward or due north or zero degrees whichever you like but again you will be forgiven because it just said magnitude so be forgiven if you miss the direction but treat a vector as a vector don't treat it as a scalar quantity trust me you will not be harmed for not do, for doing that but you will be harmed if it is required but it was not clearly stated because if it is not stated that magnitude then you're not going to forget the direction for full marks all right you get a mark for that and i think this statement is critical then substitution and your answer so this is how you get those four marks there all right so I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I like the dynamicity of this diagram because you can see you have to really adapt your diagram nicely to simplify it so that you can work with it much more effectively. Now the next question says, okay, the box continues being pulled with a force of 300 newtons at an angle 20 degrees to the surface, okay? But the box now slides up an inclined plane all right not a problem so the question says will the frictional force acting on the metal box increase decrease or stay the same <laughs> sorry it says now briefly explain your answer making use of a relevant equation okay now this is a bit of a tricky question uh, it's not very easy to picture it but let's try and do our magic now let's say there is the our okay let's 4.1.5 okay so let's draw ourselves this diagram so this inclined plane we don't know the angle so we're just going to put theta but we put our box there then of course it will still have the friction directed down so it's going to be fk 
and it will have that force okay let's just make it from the center it will have that force F which is 300 newtons and this force is acting at what 20 degrees to the horizontal that means horizontal to the surface and then we already established that it will have its two components working together the which is Fy and Fx okay so Fx is the horizontal one Fy is the vertical one which will be perpendicular to the surface but this object itself has another situation here that demands a bit of attention uh, it will have its weight directed I mean directly down on vertical to the surface of the earth and this is now FG okay and then this FG of ours has its components as well it will have a component perpendicular to the surface and the component parallel to the surface okay so we're going to have FG perpendicular FG parallel and then of course between the two we have 90 degrees I hope the diagram is not too small for you to visualize it and look at these look at these now if that is theta then theta is also there I'm just gonna put a dot it's not easy to show it okay now let's look at this one if we simplify our diagram here nice and easy considering the horizontal forces to the surface because remember there would still be a normal force here of the surface okay in that direction so we know for a fact that ah what is in balance the vertical force is the f2 parallel is in balance between fy perpendicular sorry f perpendicular and uh, okay you can say fy plus normal force because they're in the same direction they will be additive so those ones cancel each other out we forget about them we focus on the horizontal forces to the direction of motion now we can simplify our diagram into this we have our box it will have fx in that direction and it will have fk in that direction but what other force is directed in the same direction as the frictional force the vertical I mean the parallel component of the weight is also acting down so it's going to act in that direction as well so it's going to be FG parallel so can you see here there's two forces acting in the same direction ne. so what is the story here well it's easy if you think about it from Newton's second law of motion this is moving in that direction that means this fx is greater than these two together so we know that well fx minus fk minus fg parallel equals acceleration right product of acceleration and the mass that's resultant force for you but now we wanted fk so if we make fk the subject of the formula fk will be equal to f x minus what f g parallel right minus m a so you can see here that we are subtracting two things okay from fx okay right now think about the situation that was the original one the original situation we had our fk in that direction we had our force in that direction we had our fx in that direction we had our fy upward and then 20 degrees there and then we had our FG and our normal force okay now if you think about it the vertical ones cancel out so all we ended up with is our diagram looked like this FX 
and Fk. So for us to get the resultant force here, we know that if it is moving in that direction, so it's going to be Fx minus Fk equals Ma. Therefore, when you make Fk the subject of the formula, it will be Fx minus Ma. So do you see we subtracted just one unit or one measure from Fx? But here we're subtracting two measures from Fx. So in essence, this situation here, we know that the, F, uh, the Fk, which is the kinetic friction, is going to be smaller when we are moving up an inclined plane. As you can see, we're subtracting more than we were subtracting from the horizontal component of the force. All right. That is one way you can think about it. Uh, so here the answer is Fk is smaller, or you can say decreases. Ah, uh so -huh. I'm give a for this bad writing here. I don't know what I always get distracted when I'm trying to do these things. So. I end up writing my own things here. So we know therefore F whatever decreases because if you look at this situation comparing to the initial situation, you can tell that this one is gonna be much smaller than that, okay? But I would like to propose yet another method to think about this because you have to be as comprehensive as possible when you are learning. Of course, if you find it meaningless it's up to you now let's think about it let's think about it here's the first scenario fk um, I like to really 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 take time to work on these things because if you don't folks you're going to burn and I'm not going to be responsible for your burning <laughs> but I'm going to be responsible for your winning now from this situation here how did we determine the the friction here of course think about this um, we know that Fk equals mu k times the normal force right which I think it's more of what you should be working with but it doesn't limit you because I mean we've used a nice equation drawn from you know understanding how forces work on the slope now if you think about this here what is the story the normal force is what will help you determine what's going on so if you focus on the normal force here Normal force adds to the vertical component of the force and opposes the actual gravitational force, okay, which is exactly the same gravity of the object, which is quite big. So the normal force here is relatively big compared to this scenario here, where if you think about it, we will still have our object. We have that force and then the components Fy, Fx, so this is F parallel, this is Fg, This is Fg perpendicular, and then of course we're going to have Fg parallel. And then of course we're going to have theta there in between. All right, then we're going to have our normal force there. And then we still have our frictional force. Great. So now this diagram is a bit complicated if you look at it. But what I would like you to focus on is Compare the normal force in this situation and in this situation. Think about the normal force. Remember the normal force here was exactly opposing gravity when it's added to the vertical component of that force. 
But in this case, these two are only acting against Fg perpendicular, which is definitely going to be smaller than just Fg. So in this case, here, n, you can say is bigger than n here, which is going to be much smaller. Right. So in this situation, when n drops, what happens to the kinetic friction? It drops. So that's essentially that. So once the normal force is less than the normal force there, obviously from our equation we know that therefore our Fk decreases as the normal force decreases. Okay? Not a problem. So I think that was a bit easier maybe to think about compared to this one. But whichever works for you, always put it into practice. All right, you will always get it. So you get your three marks there. Of course, I think it's all about decreasing and then explanation what is happening. Here, you can also try and use this to say, fine, here, we know that we're subtracting two measures from the horizontal component compared to this one, so the FK will become smaller. It's as simple as that. Okay, guys, I hope that one was cool. I don't want to take forever, but it looks like I am taking forever anyway. So let's move uh, before we chow too much time. Now, the question says, oops, the question says here now, it's a new question. A 200 kg wooden crate is at rest in the back of a truck traveling on a horizontal road with a constant velocity. It says now, does the wooden crate experience a resultant force? Obviously the answer is no, because what did we know? It's at rest. So the answer is nope. It is at rest. So. Of course, you can, you can use Newton's first law of motion here, or the law of inertia. It says the object will remain at rest until or unless it is acted upon by some resultant force or some external force. So that's essentially the situation here. So even though the truck is moving, the wooden box is at rest on the truck. It's not moving. Law of inertia. So they didn't say explain. So leave it but if you want you can think of law of inertia or you can say the resultant force on the box is zero now that is it two marks it says now the truck then accelerates but the crate stays again still law of inertia is there in the same place now it says the coefficient of static friction is 0 0.9 so that is mu s okay and then the coefficient of kinetic friction that is mu k is 0 0.5 not a problem so let's see what is the direction they are taking here it says now draw a labeled free body diagram showing the horizontal force or forces acting on the crate while the truck is accelerating you must also indicate the direction of motion of the truck all right not a problem so we are done with this one so let's try and move if we can sometimes it's not so easy so we have here 4.2.2 okay we're starting there now, here is our truck. Maybe it's one like that. It's one of these trucks, you know. <laughs> There's our box sitting on the truck. All right, the truck is moving. I mean, my truck is ugly, so don't worry about it. So there's the truck. Now, if this truck is moving in that direction, because of law of inertia, this box will try its best to stay and not move. And as a result, if it 
moves at all it will move in that direction isn't it great so now this would be compelled to move in that direction when the track is moving in that direction because of law of inertia of course but now this one is staying the same meaning the static friction is acting in that direction and it is the only force that is keeping this box from moving that way so in essence to answer the question our free body diagram will only have the fs of course you can say static friction if you want So this is the static frictional force. So that is it. That's all. It's in that direction. And then of course they said indicate. So this is the direction of trucks acceleration. All right. So that is it. So you sort it here. You get your two marks and you move on. Ah, uh, 4.2.3. Now, hey, 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 hey. Now, go. is moving away from me. Now it says here, calculate the maximum static friction acting on the crate. Maximum static friction. So, by the way, we know that this friction is in that direction. And we were told that the coefficient of static friction is 0, 0.9. So we know for a fact that Fs is going to be equal to U times the normal force, right? Now that was 0, 0,9 multiplied by normal force. Remember it's opposing the weight of the object. So it's going to be essentially equal to that weight. So this was 200 multiplied by 9,8, okay? All right, so this is 0, 0,9 times 200 times 9,8. So this is 1,764 newtons. But in which direction is this one? Is like that. Remember, they didn't say here just the magnitude. So they just said maximum kinetic friction. So you cannot forget the direction. Since you can say due east, as we could see from our first diagram there, or you can say it 90 degrees, meaning to the east, okay? Not a problem. So that is the story here. So issue here for three marks is your magnitude, direction, and your correct substitution. So do you see when you treat your forces as vectors, there are no mistakes. Next one. It says now calculate the maximum acceleration of the track so that the crate does not slide backwards. All right, not a problem. So if we are not going to slide, it means the maximum force acting is going to be this one. So that means the track must exactly be accelerating around the resultant force of the same magnitude, isn't it? Yes. So we know that here F max so so to speak or f res must be equal to m a but of course we're going to use this one so what would be the resultant force on the track for it to exert a force that cannot oppose this one it must be the same this is one comma seven six four equals Just a second. Okay. Uh, so now that we have worked our magic, so what was this 200 
and then times the acceleration right so therefore our acceleration must be equal to this one divided by 200 so 1764 divided by 200 so I get 8.82 meters per second squared again which direction it must be in that direction isn't it great so always include direction because I didn't really mention magnitude only there so there you have it correct substitution the value and the direction we got it all right I hope that makes sense so I think the trick was knowing that the track must have this resultant force for it not to be able to oppose the static friction static friction of the box on it all right so 4.2.5 greater it says now calculate the acceleration of the crate if the track has a greater acceleration than that calculated in question 4.2.4 huh. all right now we want the acceleration of the crate okay so these things are very interesting <laughs> we first we're looking for the acceleration of the track now we are looking at the acceleration of the crate hmm. All right, so let's look at this one. Now, what we know is the acceleration of the crate is going to sort of give us a kinetic friction, right? And that kinetic friction, for it to exist, we must have some sort of an acceleration, is it? it? But then it's gonna be in the opposite direction. So we can just simply say here, Fk, is going to be equal to ma isn't it yeah because that's the only force that we're going to have opposing whichever force that crate would be moving right i don't know if i'm making sense but sometimes it's yeah very very vague now the issue is what is the kinetic friction here they gave us the coefficient which was 0 0,5 multiplied by the normal force Normal force is the weight of this crate, so which is 200 multiplied by 9,8, which is going to be equal to 200 times A. Already you can see here, these ones will cancel. Therefore, A is going to be equal to, that's 0, 0,5 times 9,8, right, which is just 4,9. meters per second squared but now the question is in which direction will the crate start accelerating hmm it's going to accelerate in which direction <laughs> that direction so it's going to be due west so be careful of your directions here all right not a problem uh, I think that is the case here again the the trick here is the correct substitution, the value, and I think the direction of the acceleration because now we're looking at the acceleration of the uh, of the crate, not the truck. Okay. Great one. Great one. All right, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that section over there. So let's just wrap this one up before we take too much time. Uh, I did not want to really take too long, but yeah, it happened. What can I do? Anyway, it says now block A and B are joined by light inextensible string. That means there's no dissipation of any forces. Block A can slide across a frictionless table when pulled by a falling block B. All right, so we have here our diagram over there and then of course it says it will fall so if it falls it's only because of the weight of that box isn't it which we can say fg of b yeah doch. 
which is also the weight of P. Maybe let's do that. Okay. Now they are saying here initially plug A is held in place by someone's hand so that means there will be no movement in the system now the question says compare the tension in the string while the system is at rest okay T rest to the tension in the string once the hand has released block A that is T moving now let's have a look at this one well the tension at rest what is going to be well remember when this object let's just focus on this one the tension here is the same right when this object is moving down it means its weight is greater than the tension right right but when that means the tension is smaller than the weight right but now when this object is not moving that means the tension here is equal to this weight so already you can tell that the tension when it's moving it's not moving it's bigger than the tension when it's moving so the tension at rest is greater than tension moving okay maybe I should have just written T moving instead okay not a problem so they didn't explain but the explanation you have it next one it says will the acceleration of the system be the same as or smaller than or greater than the acceleration due to gravity Ooh, two marks okay well the answer is the acceleration of the system is going to be less than acceleration okay let's just say a gravity okay yeah again a nightmare they I don't know I wanted to write the word in full and then I don't know why okay so that is the essence but now all I know is when acceleration of the system is in the same direction of, as gravity it is smaller than gravity when it opposes gravity for it to even oppose gravity it has to be bigger than gravity isn't it so that's what I know but the, sorry the best way to explain yourself here is focus on the tension here to, to picture this let's look at the tension here okay so what did we say here let's say now this system is in motion and it's going to move down right so what is the driving force fine we're going to say if we're looking at block A the only force acting on it is the tension right in that direction so all we know here is that T equals mass times acceleration which is the mass of object A times the acceleration of the system okay that is the first scenario then you look at block B block B has tension opposing its weight okay like that so what would be the situation here again using Newton's second law of motion so the resultant force here thereof is going to be the, the difference between the two so we know that W minus T equals M say B times A therefore if we isolate T is going to be equal to weight let's just say weight of B minus uh, what mass of B times A alright so that is what we have so we have these two equations but remember this is the same tension because they said this is a light inextensible string so in essence is the same we can therefore say M A times A equals W B minus M B times A isn't it because they are each equal to the tension then we transpose this one to the other side which implies that ma minus wait this was negative so it's going to be plus mb times acceleration oops i forgot a there yeah 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 one again go my method is getting whacked a little bit equals wp so now what is common here is the acceleration of course using your algebraic 
techniques they are going to have m of a plus m of p equals w b therefore your a is going to be w b divided by those masses together okay so now that is the case the acceleration of the system is going to be the weight of object b divided by the masses of both a and b but if you're looking at gravitational acceleration in terms of object b because that's the driving force we know wb is going to be equal to mb times g isn't it which is the gravitational acceleration therefore g is going to be wb over mass of b now do you see here what are these ratios the numerator is the same the denominator is more is less so definitely g is going to be greater than a in this case because this ratio has a smaller denominator compared to this one for the same numerator so i hope that helps to try and picture what would make sense in explaining what we are saying there all right guys uh, thank you very much for watching and i do hope you enjoyed that part and that it all makes sense if it doesn't let me know if there's any issues also please don't shy away from pointing them out so that i can do my best to include some corrections i normally write my correction my corrections in the description so whenever you're watching these videos have a look at the description box just in case i may have realized that i made a mistake and then i made up for it by writing it there or somebody points it out and then i add it down there all right guys bye bye for now see you in the next video